In this clip we're going to look at genetic variation, in particular where it comes from, how an individual is different from others in a population. So genetic variation is simply all the alleles in a population and their combinations, how they're all mixed up and shuffled together through sexual reproduction. It's a, the raw material for natural selection to work on. Because we're all different, some individuals will survive in a particular environment to breed better than others. And that's the power of natural selection and genetic variation. So we're going to look at where all the variation comes from, why individuals in a sexually reproducing population are so different, Humans all have the same 20,000 genes, that's what makes us different, but it's our slightly different versions of those genes, our different alleles, that makes us so different from one another. New alleles can only happen by mutation, a change in the base order of the DNA. So here's a person who has a perfectly good copy in their DNA to make this protein, and here's this person who has had a change in the base order and as a result the protein that they make either doesn't work or doesn't work very well. In person 3 there's a slightly different change and their version of the protein can actually lead to disease. So new alleles only happen by mutation. Sometimes it's an advantage. Being a white bear, because there's been a mistake in your colour gene, would be not a good idea in a dark forest. You'd be seen by your prey when you're trying to stalk them. But if the conditions changed and the background became white, that albino or white bear would have a huge advantage over the dark brown bears when they were trying to stalk their prey. And in the last ice age, that's exactly how white bear, polar bears evolved. They evolved from brown bear populations where the few mutant white bears suddenly had an advantage over the others. Many times the changes in base order makes absolutely no difference at all. We call that a neutral mutation. The protein still functions perfectly fine just as it did before. But sometimes a change in the protein can mean that that protein can't work and not do some important job in an organism. These two are both showing a mutation in a gene that controls how the body plan is organized early in the development of the fetus. And this little lamb has got what looks like eight legs and the little duck has four. And of course in the wild they wouldn't survive. So mutations can either be beneficial, good for an individual, neutral, not matter at all, or harmful. But what's, what is it about mutations? If we have a mutation, is it going to be passed on the next generation? On the left here, we're looking at a mutation in a body cell, a somatic cell. Some cells in the skin have been damaged by UV light, and now there is a skin cancer growing. But of course, that doesn't affect the eggs or the sperm in this person, so that mutation won't be being passed on. To pass on, a mutation must occur in the gametes in the formation of those gametes. And that gamete must be part of a fertilization event. If that happens, then the mutation could be passed on. The rest of genetic variation is simply based on putting all those different alleles, all the different versions of the different genes in new combinations. It's made possible because those allele pairs, the big B, little b, separate during meiosis or segregate. And the four main ways that alleles can get shuffled around during sexual reproduction. Firstly, independent assortment. When during a meiosis the homologous chromosomes line up beside each other, how the next pair lines up is totally independent of what these guys did. So they pair up accurately with their homologous pair, but the orientation of it could be that way or it could be that way. So when this cell divided, the chromosome bearing the big G ended up in, with the chromosome bearing the big Y. And here we have a gamete, big G, big Y. And the other side of the picture, the little G, little Y. This time, that homologous pair arranged itself in the other orientation. So now we have some gametes that have the big G with the little Y and the little G with the big Y. Alleles have been put in 
different combinations. And because you have 23 pairs of chromosomes, there is billions of ways that the alleles can end up with in the gamete. The next way during meiosis is crossing over. Here's our chromosome that's copied itself. It's homologous pair that's copied itself. And these inner chromatids here can cross over. The chromosome actually breaks and rejoins with the similar bit of chromosome from the other homologous pair. So we originally would have only made gametes with big A, big B, or little a, little b. But now we've got some chromosomes that are recombined. So we can now make some gametes that have big A with a little b, or little a with a big B, putting alleles in combinations that they weren't in before. After meiosis, another way that can introduce variation is which particular gamete actually fertilizes the egg. The random fusion of gametes. Any one of these sperm may be the lucky one that gets into the egg, and that again introduces a huge amount of variation. That's why two sisters don't look the same, because dad is making billions of different kinds of sperm. And lastly, mate selection. Which two individuals end up mating together. So why is sex so popular in the natural world? Because it helps species survive changes in the environment by making genetically varied offspring. Some won't survive, but some will have the right alleles, the right phenotype to live successfully in a changed environment. So remember these differences come about through these processes. Firstly, new alleles are only made through mutation, changes of base order. The rest of genetic variation comes from putting those alleles into new combinations, shuffling them around in meiosis through independent assortment and crossing over, and during sex by the choice of mates and the random fusion of eggs and sperm. This takes us through to our final topic, natural selection and adaptation, where we look at how genetic variation in whole populations can work to the advantage of a whole species.